Pastor Damien. I'm excited to connect with you today in God's Word as together we learn from Jesus, live like Jesus, and lead others to Jesus. Today I'm reflecting from a few words from the book of Hosea in the Old Testament, Hosea chapter 2. These words reflect the heart of a God who not only sees the direction and the end game that that direction that Israel as a nation was choosing to walk into, but he intervenes in ways that demonstrate not just his sovereign power, but his commitment and love uh, to just love a people that were prone to walk away from him, a people that were prone to just be rebellious to him. And in this, I find incredible comfort just in God's love towards me. But as I continue to pray for those uh, and over those that may, uh, and you may have some people that you're praying for in the same respect, that have wandered away from the faith they once professed, maybe grew up in church and are having nothing to do with it, are going through that deconstruction season of just uh, growing through and is this really what I want? Is this really what I believe? Um, and, and all these different places and seasons of life and doing life in this world, we're constantly invited to pull our hand out of God's and to walk away from him, to pursue the things this world offers as if it will bring us comfort, it will bring us the joy that we're seeking, that we're searching for. And often it's not a place of health in which we make a decision to pull our hand out of God's if it's been placed with him, but a place of brokenness, wounds that have not healed within us, brokenness that may generationally have been handed to us, we're navigating strongholds in our sermon series currently at the church that I'm blessed to be serving in. But for you and I tonight, these words from Hosea, I want to just bless you with and may it be an encouragement to you as you pray and continue to patiently wait to see the harvest that God is doing in their lives through your prayers. These words come from Hosea chapter 2. And uh, God speaks to the prophet Hosea, saying to the nation, picturing her as an unfaithful wife who is going after other lovers. God says this, she said, I will go after my lovers who give me my food and my water, my wool and my linen, my olive oil and my drink. So they're, they're saying that all these things that God is giving them that these other nations and these other gods have provided for them. That God, I don't need to follow your rules, your statutes. I don't need to walk in submission to you. It's just not bringing me the things that I want in life. I'm going to go pursue the things that I want out beyond you. And God says this, Therefore I will block her path with thorn bushes, or a hedge of thorns, briars. And I will wall her in so that she cannot find her way. She will chase after her lovers, but will not catch them. She will look for them, but not find them. Then she will say, I will go back to my husband as at first. For then I was better off than now. And what God is showing is that he sees the path and he sees the end game and the sorrow that is going to be inevitable for them. And so he puts up this wall of protection, this hedge of protection. And this hedge, which is full of thorns, it, it prevents them from going and finding uh, what will not only be a lack of joy, a lack of happiness, but just destruction. So it, in a sense, it feels like God's messing up their plans, but he's preventing them from knowing true hardship, true sorrow, true devastation. And, and that hedge there so is to prevent them from going too far, but it's also a hedge in the sense that prevents what's outside from getting too close in to harm the person more than the invitation that they're able to extend. In other words, this hedge of protection is very good at keeping lions out and keeping people in. And we see this, uh, it played out throughout the scriptures in a sense of when we pray for a hedge of protection for those that we love, uh, it's a spiritual hedge that comes around to protect against the spiritual forces of darkness, but it also works to just be a canopy that goes with a protection that surrounds those who are wandering away from the Lord beautiful illustration that we have of this in the New Testament. If you look in this uh, description, you'll find the scripture that link that you can go ahead and read this. But there was a man that had two sons. One of the sons wanted his inheritance before the father died. And he took that inheritance and he went after the things that he thought would bring him joy and happiness. What happened was not only did he find himself uh, exhausted all of his funds, having not a penny to his name, but he was stuck in a nation, a country that was not his country. It was not where he belonged. And there was a great famine. And so not only was there hardship over the people, but he couldn't find comfort. He couldn't find help from them because he did not belong there. And so he got hired as someone who would feed the troughs of pigs. 
and he found himself so desperate that he was actually eating what was uh, deemed suitable for only pigs. He was at the bottom of the barrel, and he thought to himself, just like God said uh, through Hosea, the nation of Israel would look and realize that maybe it wasn't so bad. And they would start to long for what it is that they turn their nose up against and start to realize that maybe what God was offering was true joy, was true satisfaction. And so this young man decides to go home and just be a servant in his father's house because even if he's not entitled or able to uh, be a son again in his father's house, one of his father's servants still lives better than what he's doing right now. Why? Because he still belongs in that country. He still belongs in that house. So he goes back and he finds in that narrative, Jesus said the father was looking and waiting, which means the father was praying, probably praying the same hedge of protection around his son that those thorns would keep him from going too far to where he would be lost. The son, he said and rejoiced, for his son that was lost is not found, was dead, but is now alive. And I just, I love that story. But one final passage I want to share with you to encourage you comes from Acts, I believe the 26th chapter. And this is where Paul stands to give account of how he came to faith in Christ. He said he was on the road to Damascus. And while he was on the road to persecute the church, persecuting the church, he was like the Darth Vader of Christianity early on, except he wasn't good turned bad. He was bad about to turn good. And he encountered the last person he expected to encounter, the Savior of mankind, the Son of God, Jesus. And the conversation that he had was, Lord, who are you? A bright light that blinded him. It was God's kingdom that just broke violently into his reality. And he said, I am he whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the pricks. And what that is, it's these sharpened sticks with points that they would use to poke and prod cattle, dumb beasts, in the direction that they are to go. Another understanding of this is a briar or a briar wall or a briar patch. In other words, as wicked and as much devastation as Paul was bringing, God surrounded him and only enabled him to go so far before God broke in and broke him in order to resurrect him in the image of his son, Jesus Christ. Which leads us again to understand Jesus taught his early followers to pray for those who persecute you, to bless them. I wonder who was praying for Saul as he before he became Paul. Who was praying for him while he was wreaking havoc and breathing out threats against the church, breaking up families, husbands and wives, throwing them in prison, seeing them suffer and die uh, for their faith in Jesus? Who was praying for him? And again, all of this comes back to the reality that God loves with a love that our love for those that we are caring for is but a shadow of. And I want to encourage you, no matter how devastating the situation seems, no matter how far away someone may see from God, they are never beyond the reach of God. Continue to pray. Continue to petition that hedge of briars, that hedge of protection, and continue to wait and see that, re that return of the prodigal um, to see the salvation come to the, who is an enemy of Christ today, who will become one of his champions, his great warriors tomorrow. And uh, I just share that with you tonight. It's been on my heart. This is just a short video, but again, that's Hosea chapter two. I want to close in prayer and I want to invite you to pray with me as we pray for those that are not only wandering away from God, but running away from him, running away from the faith they once professed, running away from the gospel that has been shared consistently in their lives, running to the things that God sees the end game of, and it will not be joy. It will not be happiness. It will not be satisfaction. It will be the opposite of life. It'll be death. And outside of Christ, it's an eternal reality of the emptiness that these things were never able to give. They were lies. And we spent an eternity being eaten alive by the lies that we spent our life pursuing and the lies that we sold out our faith to Jesus Christ on behalf for. So I encourage you with God. Our God is the God of the impossible. Our God knows how to bring his children home. He knows to go after those that are lost. Continue to pray, continue to keep the faith, and continue to pursue the opportunities to give Jesus your yes. And I'll close on this one final note. While we're focused on someone in particular, and as we're praying for them, often God uses somebody to reach into their life in that moment. And it may not be you. It may be somebody around them, another believer in Christ that just happens to be there in that moment of breakthrough. And God uses them to lead them back. 
I say this to encourage you, but I also say this to challenge you. Don't be so focused on who it is that you desire to see the work of God come through. And, and, and as God brings somebody into their lives, don't be so focused that you miss the opportunity that God is calling you to step in. So while you're praying for your prodigal, someone else's prodigal that's being prayed for is a part of your life right now. Allow God to use you in that prodigal's life as you are praying and trusting that God is going to use somebody else in the prodigal that you love and are praying for. Again, I hope this encourages you. Let's pray. Father, our God, I thank you so much that you are a God who loves us with a love that nothing else in this world compares to. It is a love that is relentless and that comes after us, Father, and knows how to bring home to you those whom you have chosen. Lord, I just pray, may you continue to strengthen us in faith to pray boldly, to pray persistently, and to pray the power of Jesus' name and a binding of the enemy, a binding of his deceptive lies, a binding over the lust that he seeks to fan, his efforts to bring that flame. Father, in all things that is not of you, touching the lives of those, and for, touching our lives, touching those that are wandering or running away from you, we bind in the name of Jesus, Father, and we cast. We don't just bind, but we bind and cast out. We also loosen in the name of Jesus what is gripping, what is holding on, the brokenness. Father, we pray healing. The strongholds, we pray demolition, Father, that there would be a release of the captives to run into your presence, to know your healing, to know your love, to know your mercy and grace, and to know your restoration, your resurrection, Father. And I pray, Lord, may you continue to be a hedge around all those, Father, who are running after sin. I thank you for all the ways that you been a hedge in my life. I am here now today as a pastor, as, as your son, as a husband, as a, as a father, as a brother, as a friend in all things, because you were faithful to put hedges in my life that made me bleed in ways, Father, that, that may be scars right now, but I, I bless these scars because they, they open my eyes to see how good you are, Father, and to see your embrace through repentance. And I just pray, Lord, may you continue to champion forward the reality of who you are against the lies, as truth against the lies, as light against the darkness, Father. And in all these ways, as we pray for you to lead those into the life of the prodigals we love, Father, may we be willing to be that answer to the prodigals that are a part of our life. Father, we are the answer to someone else's prayer for a son or a daughter or a friend, um, someone that we care for. Father, we're desiring to see the fullness of Jesus as our Savior, our Healer, our Deliverer, our Sanctifier and King become sovereign in the life of through repentance and grace. Lord, in all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I pray that this has blessed you tonight. If so, please like and share. Put in the comment section how I can be praying for you. If you have any questions, you're always welcome to reach out to me. Uh, it can be, again, reached out through this YouTube channel. You can put in the comment section to contact you, and I uh, review those regularly, and I will do so. Until next time, may you be blessed in Jesus Christ as you give him your yes and submit to his sovereign will and purposes in your life in order to work through your life. God bless until next time.